Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here in Palo Alto to showcase a, a brand new uh, relationship and technology partnership and, and technology showcase. Uh, with, we're here with Neil Vajoan, who's the CEO of Netronome. Did I get that right? Yeah. <laughs> Almost, the, we'll let you say it. And uh, Nick McEwen is chief scientist and chairman and co-founder of Barefoot Networks. Uh, guys, welcome to the conversation. Obviously Thank a lot you. going on in the industry. Um, you can't, you're, we're seeing you know, massive change in the industry, certainly, um, digital transformation is the buzzword the analysts all use, but really what that means is the entire end-to-end -end digital space with networks all the way through the applications are completely transforming. Network transformation is not just moving packets around, it's wireless, it's content, it's everything in between that makes it all work. So um, let's talk about that and, and let's talk about what your company is. Neil, talk about your company, uh, what you guys do, Netronome and, uh, and, and Nick, same for you for Barefoot, start with, with you guys. So as Netronome, our core focus lies around smart NICs, what we mean by that, this, these are um, elements that go into the network service, which in the sort of cloud and NFV world gets used for a lot of network services. Um, and that's our area of focus. Barefoot is trying to make switches that were previously fixed function, turning them to something that those who own and operate networks can program them for themselves to customize them or add new features or protocols that they need to support. And barefoot, you know, you're walking in the park, you don't want to step in any glass, you know, or you know, and, and get a cut. And I like that, I like, love the name of the company, but but brings out the real issue of, you know, getting this IO world, you know, with Nix, it goes back to the old, old school mindset of just network cards and servers. But if you take that out on the internet now, that is the IO challenge in real time. is certainly mm -hmm. a big part of the edge device, whether that's a human or device. IOT to mobile, um, and then moving it across the network. And by the way, there's multiple networks. Mm -hmm. So is this kind of where you guys are showcasing your capabilities? So fundamentally, you need both sides of the, of, the, of, the, of the line, if I could put it that way. So we, on the server side, and specifically also giving visibility between virtual machines to virtual machines, also called VNFs to VNFs in a service mm -hmm. chaining mechanism which is what a lot of the NFV customers are deploying today. And really as the, um, as the entire infrastructure upon which the services are delivered, as that moves more into software, and more of it is created by those who own and operate these services for themselves. They mm -hmm. either create it, commission it, buy it, download it, and then modify it to best meet their needs. That's true whether it's in the network interface portion, whether it's in the switch, and they've seen it happen in the control plane, mm -hmm. and now it's moving down so that they can define all the way down to how packets are processed in the NIC and in the switches. And when they do that, they can then add in their ability to see what's going on in ways that they've never been able to do before. Mm -hmm. So we really think of us ourselves as providing that programmability and that flexibility down all the way to the way that the packets And what's the impact? Uh, Nick, talk about the impact and take us through like an example. You guys are showcasing your capabilities uh, to the world. Um, and so what, what, what is it, give, what's the impact and give us an example of, of what the benefit would be. I mean, what, what, what goes on there? Because instrumentation, certainly everyone wants to instrument everything. Yes, yeah. But what's the practical benefit? I mean, who wins from this and, and what's the real impact? Well, you know, in, 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 in day go, days gone by, if you're a service provider providing uh, services to your customers, then uh, you would typically do this out of vertically integrated pieces of equipment that you get from equipment vendors. It's closed, it's proprietary, they have their own sort of NetFlow, SFlow, whatever the, the mechanism that they have for measuring what's going on. And you had to learn and live with the constraints of what they had. As this all gets kind of disaggregated and broken apart, and that the owner of the infrastructure gets to define the behavior in software, they can now chain together and the modules and the pieces that they need in order to deliver the service. That's great, but now they've lost that proprietary measurement, so now they need to introduce the measurement that they can get greater visibility. This actually has created a tremendous opportunity, and this is what we're demonstrating, is if you can come up with a uniform way of doing this so that you can see, for example, the path that every packet takes, the delay that it encounters along the way, the rules that it encounters that determines the path that it gets. Mm -hmm. If it encounters congestion, who else contributed to that congestion so we know who to go blame? Then by giving them that flexibility, 
they can go and debug systems much more quickly and change them and modify them. It's interesting, it's almost like the aspirin, right? You need, you know, the headache now is, I have good proprietary technology for point measurement and solutions, but yet I need to manage multiple components. I think components. there's, there's an yeah. add-on to what Nick said, which is the whole key point here, which is the programmability, because there's data and then there's information. Um, gathering lots and lots of telemetry data yeah. is easy. Yeah. Um, the problem is you yeah. need to have it at all points, which is Nick's key yeah. point, but the programmability allows the DevOps person, in other words, the operational people within the cloud or, or mm -hmm. uh, carrier infrastructure to actually write code that identifies and isolates the data well, uh, the information rather than the data that they need. So is this customer based for you guys, the carriers, the service providers, who's, who's, who's your target audience? That's yep. right. I think it's service providers mm -hmm. who are applying the NFV technologies, in other words, the cloud-like technologies. I always say the real big story mm -hmm. here is the cloud um, technologies rather than just the cloud. Yeah, yeah. And how that's done. And same for you guys, you guys are, yes. this is its joint same target right. customer. Yeah, I, I don't think there's yeah. any disagreement. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> well, we'll go. I want to get drill into the uh, the yes. whole aspirin analogy because there's other things that you brought up with the with the programmability because mm -hmm. um, you know NFV has been that you know saving grace. It's been the holy grail for how many years now, and and you're starting to see the tides shifting now towards where NFV is is not a um, silver bullet, so to speak, but it is actually accelerating some of the change. And, and you know, I always like to ask people, hey, are you an aspirin? Are you a vitamin? One guest told me, I'm a steroid. We make things grow faster. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But in a way, the aspirin solves a problem, like immediate headache. So it sounds like a lot of the things that you mm -hmm. mentioned, that's an immediate benefit right there on the instrumentation in an open way, multi-component, uh, multi-vendor kind of uh, benefits of proprietary, but open. But the, the point about programmability gives a lot of headroom around kind of that vitamin, that steroid piece where it's, going to allow for automation, mm -hmm. which brings an interesting thing that's customizable automation, meaning you can apply software policy mm -hmm. to it. Is that kind of like, can you tease that out? Is that an area that you I, guys are talking about? The first thing that we should mention is probably the, the new language called P4. Mm -hmm. And I think yes. Nick, Nick will be too um, um, modest mm -hmm. to state <laughs> that, but I think Nick has been a key player in uh, along with his team and uh, many other people in the definition and the creation of this language which allows the programmability of these, all these elements. And, um, yeah, let's, let's drill down. I mean, hours. toot your own horn here. Let's get into it because yeah. what is it and why is, what's the benefit and what is the real value? What's the upshot of P4? Yeah, the, the way that hardware that processes packets, whether it's in network interface cards or in, the, in, in switching, the way that that's been defined in the past has been by chip designers. At the time that they define the behavior, yeah. they're writing Verilog or VHDL and as we know, people that design chips don't operate big networks, so they don't really know what capabilities to put They're in. They're good at logic in a vacuum, but not exactly. necessarily in real exactly. world, right? Is that what yeah. <laughs> so what we Not to insult chip designers, they're great, right? So what we've all wanted to do for some time is to come up with a uniform language, a domain-specific language that allows you to define how packets will be processed in interfaces, in switches, in hypervisor switches inside uh, virtual machine environments in a uniform way so that someone who's proficient in that language can then describe a behavior that can then operate in different par parts of the chain services so that they can get the same behavior, a uniform behavior, so that they can see the network-wide, the, the, the service-wide behavior in a uniform way. The P4 language is merely a way to describe that behavior and then both Netronome and Barefoot, we each have our own compilers for compiling that down to the specific processing element that operates in the interfaces and in the So switches. you're bridging the chip layer with some sort of abstraction layer to give people the ability to do policy programming. So they, exactly. all the heavy lifting stuff in the old network days was configuration management. I mean, all those, I mean, that was like hard stuff and then now you got dynamic networks, it even gets harder. Is okay. this kind of where the problem yes. gets goes away? And this is where automation is. Exactly, and the, and the key point is the, is the programmability versus configurability. Yeah. In a configurable environment, you're always trying to pre-guess what your customer is going to try <laughs> to look at. Guessing's and, not good in the and, networking and, area. Uh, That's not good for five the, nines. In the new world that we're in yeah. now, the, the, the customer actually wants to define exactly what the information is they want to extract, which, is your, you, which is your whole 
question around the, the rules and, and so So let me see if I can connect the dots here, just kind of connect this forward. So in the showcase, you guys are going to show this, this programmability, this mm -hmm. kind of efficiency at, at, some, at the layer of uh, bringing instrumentation and then using that information and or data, depending on how it's sliced and diced via the, the, the policy and programmability. But this becomes cloud-like. Right, so when you start moving, thinking about cloud, where service providers are under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to go cloud, because over the top right now is booming. You're seeing a huge content and application market that's super ripe for kind of the, these kinds of services. They need that ability to have the infrastructure be like software. Yeah. So infrastructure as code is the DevOps term that, that we talk about in our DevOps world. But that has been more data center kind of language mm -hmm. with developers. Is it going the same trajectory in the service provider world? Because you have networks, I mean, they're bigger, uh, higher scale. Um, what are some of those DevOps dynamics in your world? Can you talk about that and yeah. share some color on yeah. that? I mean, it, the, the way in which large service providers are starting to deliver those services is out of something that looks very much like a cloud platform. In fact, it could in fact be exactly the same technology, mm -hmm. the same servers, the same switches same operating systems, a lot of the same techniques. The problem they're trying to solve is slightly different. They're chaining together the means to process a sequence of operations. A little bit like though, the cloud operators are moving towards microservices that get chained mm -hmm. together. So there are a lot of similarities here and the problems they face are very, uh, yeah. are very similar. But think about the hell that this potentially creates for them. It means that we're giving them so much rope to hang themselves. Yeah because everything is now got to be put together in a way that's coming from different sources, written and authored by different people with different intent uh, or from, diff from, from different places across the, across the internet. And so being able to see and observe exactly how this is working is even more critical than... So I love the rope to hang yourself analogy because a lot of people will end up breaking stuff as Mark Zuckerberg's famous quote is, move fast, break stuff. And then, by the way, when they hit 100 million users and move slogan went for move fast, be reliable. So he got on the, <laughs> on the five nines bandwagon pretty quick. But it's more than just the instrumentation. The key, the key that you're talking about here is, is that they have to run those networks in really high uh, reliability environments. Sure. And so that begs the challenge of, okay, um, it's not just easy as throwing a Docker container at, at something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what people are doing now. Like, hey, I'm going to just use microservices. That's the answer. They've still got stuff under the hood, but underneath microservices, yeah. you have orchestration challenges. And this kind of looks and feels like the old configuration management problems, but moved up the stack. So is that an, a, a concern so, that in your market as well? So I think that's a very, very good point that you make because the carriers, as you say, tend to be more dependent almost on absolute reliability and very importantly, performance. But in other words, they need to know that this is going to be 100 gigs because that's what they've signed up the SLA <laughs> with their customer for. <laughs> it's not going to be almost 100 gigs because then they're going to end up paying a lot of penalties. Yeah, yeah. they um, can't afford breakage. So, they're ops dev, not it, dev ops. It, it, what is, which comes first in their world. Yeah, so the yeah. critical point here is, is that this is where the demo that we're doing, which shows the ability to, 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 to capture all this information at line rate, at very high speeds in the switches, Six so let's talk about this demo you're doing, the showcase that you guys are, are, are providing and demonstrating to the marketplace. What's the what, what's the pitch? I mean, what's the what is it? What's the, what's the uh, essence of the insight of this demo? What's mm -hmm. it? What's it proving? So I think that the um, it, it's good to think about a scenario in which you would need this, and then this leads into what the demo would be. Um, very common in an environment like the the the, the, the VNF uh, kind of environment, where something goes wrong. They're trying to figure out very quickly who's, who's to blame, which part of the infrastructure was, was, was the problem. Could it be congestion? Could it be a misconfiguration? <laughs> Could it, everyone, <laughs> everyone pointing a finger at the other guy. The typical way two days later, what happened, really? The typical way that they do this is they'll bring the people that are responsible for the compute, the networking, and the storage quickly into one room and say, go figure it out. The people that are doing the compute, they'll be modifying and changing and customizing, running experiments, isolating the problem. So are the people that are doing storage. They can program their environment. In the past, the networking people had ping and trace route. That's the same tools that they had 20 years ago. Right? <laughs> what we're doing is changing that yeah. by introducing the means where they can program and configure, run different experiments, run different probes so that they can look and see the things that they need to see. And in the demo in particular, you'll be able to see the packets coming in through a switch, 
through a NIC, through a couple of VMs, back out through a switch, and then you can look at that packet afterwards, and you can ask questions of the packet itself. Something you've never It's the ultimate before. debugger. Basically, it's the ultimate the debugger. That's right, go to the packet. Programmable say, debugger. <laughs> which path did you take? How long did you wait at, wait at each NIC, at each VM, at each switch port as you went through? What are the rules that you followed that led you to be here? And if you encountered some congestion, whose fault was it? Who did you share that queue with? So we can go back and apportion the blame. So you get a multiple so dimension of, of path information coming in, not just a standard stove piped tools. That's and right. then everyone compares logs and then there's all this, you, these holes in it. People don't know what the hell happened. And through the programmability, you can isolate the piece of the information. So the experimentation agile is where I think, that's is that what important. you're getting at? You can very, say, very you can really get down and dirty into a duplication environment, and also run these Absolutely. really fast experiments versus kind of in theory or in, in exactly, on a Exactly, which is what, yep. as Nick said, is exactly what people on the server side and on the storage side have been able to do in the past. Okay, so for people watching that are kind of getting into this and people who aren't, just give me an order of magnitude of the impact and the consequences of not taking this approach vis-a-vis -vis the other, the available today, today's available if techniques. If you wanted to try and figure out who it was that you were sharing a queue with inside an interface or inside a switch, you have no way to do that today, right? No means to do that. And so if you wanted to be able to say, it's that aggressive flow over there, that malfunctioning service over there, you've got no means to do it. Mm -hmm. As a consequence, the networking people always get the blame because they can't show that it wasn't them. Mm -hmm. But if you can say, I can see in this queue, there were four flows going mm -hmm. through or 4,000 flows, and one of them was really badly behaved, and it was that one over there, and I can tell you exactly why its packets were ending up here, then you can immediately go in and shut that one down. Yeah. They have no way to, they go and randomly shut that Can I get this for my family? I need this for my household. I mean, am I going to use this for my kids? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know exactly the bad behavior. I need to prove it. No, but this is what the point is. is this is fast. I mean, you're talking speed too, it's another aspect. The What's the speed on, uh, lag on, on approach versus uh, taking the old current approach versus this joint approach you guys are taking? What's the, give me an estimate on, on just ballpark numbers. Well, on, there's two aspects to the speed. Yeah. One is the speed at which it's operating. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to be, in, in the demo, it's running at, uh, at, at 40 gigabits per second, but this can easily run, for example, in the barefoot switch, it'll run at six terabits per second. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing here is that in, in this entire environment, this measurement capability does not generate a single extra packet. All of it is self-contained in the packets that are already flowing. So there's no latency issues on running this in production. If you wanted to then change the behavior, you needed to go and modify what was happening in the NIC, modify what was happening in the switch. You can do that in minutes. Yeah. So that you can say. Now the time, the time it takes for a user now to do this, mm -hmm. let's go to that time series. What does that look like? So current method is get everyone in the room, do these things. Are we talking? I think yeah. that today it's just simply not possible. Not possible. So it's, yeah, it's that, a new capability. The key issue. So this is a new capability. This is a new That's capability. Right. And exactly as Nick said, it's getting the network to the same level of, of <laughs> ability that you always right. had inside the So space. I got to ask you guys as, fa as founders of your companies, because this is one of those things that's a great success story as entrepreneurs, you got, you know, it's not, it's not just a better mousetrap, it's revolutionary in the sense that no one's ever had the capability before. So when you go to events like Mobile World Congress, you're out in the field, are you shaking people like, you need me, <laughs> I need to cut the line and tell you what's going on. I mean, it, you must have a sense of urgency to the other, or is it resonating with the folks you're talking to? I mean, what are, what are some of the conversations you're having with folks? They must. They must be pretty excited. Like, can you share any anecdotal stories? Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we're finding across the industry, not only in the service providers, the data center companies, Wall Street, the OEM box vendors, everybody is saying, I need, and have been saying for a long time, I need the ability to probe into the behavior of individual packets, and I need whoever is owning and operating the network to be able to customize and change that. They've never been able to do that. The name of the technique that we use is called in-band network telemetry, or INT, and everybody is asking for it now. Actually, whether it's yeah. with the two of us mm -hmm. or whether they're asking for it more generally, this is this is you'll game see changer this everywhere. It's a game changer. Yeah, then that's right. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, awesome. Well, final question is: Is that um, what's the business benefits for them? Because I can imagine you get this nailed down with the proper, the, the ability to test new apps because you know, obviously we're in a wild west environment with a tsunami of apps coming. Yep. There's always going to be uh, some tripwires in new, new apps, certainly with microservices and APIs. Yep. I uh, think the general issues that we're addressing here is absolutely crucial to the successful rollout 
of NFV infrastructures. In other words, the ability yeah. to rapidly change, monitor, and, and uh, adapt is critical. It yeah. goes wider than just this particular demo, but I think it's these all apps over the. It's, it's all it's apps on the, on the, the service provider. To handle all the VNFs. Well, in the old days, it was simply network spikes, it, tons it, of traffic coming. In. Now yeah. you have apps could throw off anomalies anywhere, right? You'd have no idea what it, what the exactly. downstream triggers yeah. could be. And that's the whole notion of the programmable network. Which yes. is critical. Well guys, any information where people can get some more um, information on this awesome opportunity, you guys sites want to share quick uh, uh, web addresses and places where people get white papers or information? For the general P4 movement, there's p4.org, p the number four.org, nice and easy. You'll find lots of information about the programmability that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. possible by programming the, the, the forwarding plane and both, uh, what, what both of us are doing. Inbound network telemetry, you'll find descriptions there, P4 programs, and uh, white papers describing that. And of course, then the two company websites, yep. Netroom yeah. and Barefoot. Great, Nick and Neil, thanks for uh, thanks. spending some time sharing the insights and congratulations, New KB. We'll keep an eye out for it. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking to you soon. Thank thanks you. for coming on. This is theCUBE here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.